water water everywhere not a drop to drink these lines by english poet samuel taylor has become the harsh reality of our holy rivers today a very good afternoon to all i dr mitali sarkar on behalf of terry extend a warm welcome to all our esteemed speakers and distinguished delegates to the thematic track on net zero possibilities in textile wastewater treatment organized under the auspices of world sustainable development summit 2024 it's truly an honor to have you all today gathered here for this momentous event i request all our distinguished guests to kindly take their seats on the dais mr rajiv ranjan mishra former director general national mission for clean ganga an advisor to the nmcg terry center of excellence mr deen bandhu gora scientist f and director cpcb central pollution control ms chandrima chatterjee secretary general confederation of indian textile industry city cit ict mr vijay kumar managing director swan environmental private limited and dr nupur bahadur associate director nmcg terry center of excellence in water reuse <clears throat> without further ado i would like to commence the proceeding by extending a warm welcome to dr nupur bahadur associate director in tcoe and environment uh, environment and waste management division terry please ma'am we are also joined by ms prajakta verma joint secretary ministry of textile government of india thank you ma'am good afternoon to one and all and i once again i extend warm warm welcome to all the delegates for the session and i am truly privileged it's in fact i would say a momentous occasion for us as a center of excellence to be organizing the second event from the center very shortly within 6 months tenure and uh, it's a pleasure uh, further because this is the today the proceedings for this session is uh, curated based on the uh, ongoing world sustainable development summit three days it's a annual flagship event of terry and one day is kept majorly for all the divisions to present the best work they have done in the year and we can proudly say that we have uh, completed the nmcg funded our project for pilot demonstration of tedox technology in ruma industrial area kanpur so Uh, as a best case of from this year we are glad to present today and as the findings we will be discussing the projects uh, outcome so uh, without further delay i am uh, i would like to start uh, this and uh, all the distinguished uh, speakers on the dais i warmly welcome you because particularly this is very important to have all relevant stakeholders to have at one place so we today we have the funders with us the mentors the guide the uh, stakeholder the textile industry with us the ministry of jal shakti then the regulatory body the cpcb and the industry perspective so let us all begin so we'll briefly uh, i'll make a presentation of the project so today we are talking about achieving net zero in textile waste water treatment and this is a sector where we are struggling for the treatment removing of color and here yet we are so confident and talking about achieving net zero in textile waste water so this is a humble uh, beginning we are making and a small presentation with the outcomes of the project so starting with the target problem so as a water uh, textile uh, industry the major issue which comes first is and the foremost is the color color with the dyes pigments which are organic in nature they causes the toxicity as well then second 
we use a large amount of chemicals and large number of chemicals for textile wastewater treatment which leads to sludge generation and average value is around 30 to 40 kgs per meter cube generated then the third problem which comes is the biodegradability we rely heavily on the biological treatment systems and uh, having such uh, colored compounds and toxicity with them our biological system often fail uh, for this sector and fourth important challenge so generally it leads to after passing through sand filter carbon filter it generally we come out with some colored effluent from any industry so this is the inadequate treatment so msme doesn't have a choice to discard or through drains but large industries who can afford tertiary treatment zld plants so this orange color water generally it goes as the ro feed feed for the ro tertiary treatment you can see highly energy intensive processes with the ro uh, associated problems of biofouling choking of membranes and from here comes the costs and this starts making the zld a realizing industry feels it's a a big elephant in the room so then ro reject ro after three cycles the reject is there problem is not ending ro reject further goes for our me you can see the huge investment in the me system then the me also has its reject so problem is basically if we have to start from a the real effluent to b which is the me condensate you see the whole process is so highly energy and resource intensive and yet at what cost we are having so average cost which we have estimated or industry data is around rupees 400 in achieving uh, 400 per meter cube in achieving zld so based on the industry color various so it's range from 4 to 450 so this is the cost so these are the areas and this is the area where we are working so understanding the problem now coming to the project itself directly to the project this is a CETP, Common Effluent Treatment Plant in the Ruma Industrial Area of Kanpur. And you can see the Google image now showing the TEDx plant over there. This is the current treatment which is taking place in the Ruma Industrial Area. So because we have to understand the problem and together we have to find a solution. So what we see here is that 11 units are discharging their effluent in a CETP, there it is after the tube settler it goes for the biological treatment after primary it goes to the biological after settling tank what you see are the parameters passing through sand filter carbon filter ultimately the fourth sample down is something which is coming out so inadequate treatment if we can help the industry this is what we see and you can see from the parameters the non-compliance and the 48 hours it takes and uh, this is the scene also here one very important factor energy consumed because we are today talking of advanced oxidation technology so one parameter is very important to discuss and cannot be neglected uh, is per C kg cod reduction because cod is the chemical oxygen demand which has to be met to um, meet the compliance to remove the color to remove cod this is a parameter and these are the real values in cod reduction what we get from 0 0.004 is the figure which we have to remember now this project was awarded to us in 2021 December and uh, last two years we have been working on the project you can see the 20 KLD and this whole project was sanctioned by an NMCG for the augmentation of 1.55 MLD CETP plant and since for, uh, it has to be demonstrated technology has to be demonstrated for the first time in the world so therefore phase one was given to us for establishing the pilot so this is a 20 kld plant established within 100 square meter of the area so small footprint and we are directly taking the water from the equalization tank and treating so this was inaugurated last year by dg sir these are the results of the 17th february uh, you can see direct tedox treatment these are the results and now this TEDx treated water is expected to go to the biological system. Then again, this plant ran for six to seven months. And at the, this, these are the results from the August. And you can see the results. And these are the objectives which were given to us to meet to demonstrate the technology. 
for the first time in the world, it is successfully demonstrated. And these are the parameters which were there uh, for us to monitor. And from the parameters, you can see the results. And here in this case, at the pilot scale, we were able to achieve energy consumption and the values per kg COD reduction of 0 0.009. Again, a figure I'm, I will talk about because this is very important. So 0 0.004 to 0 0.009. What is most important here, what has been achieved with almost same order, but the benefit is the removal of the color, which is, and substantial, more the COD reduction, better is the value, which we are able to achieve through this technology. And now further going, I'll come back to this figure again. If we can enable solar in this TEDOC system, the estimated value is again going to be the same, 0 0.004 kg, kilowatt hour per kg, which means with our steps one after the other. If we are able to take TEDOX to that level and integrate solar into it, the uh, energy consumption and the cost will be exactly the same which are much lesser than what current CETP is bearing. So this is apart from the result, these are the inputs. Also what another benefit if you see on the um, um, problem statement, the sludge, this was a matter of chance, a very good outcome, apart from the water quality, energy, and cost. The sludge, we got it tested through TCLP studies. All 88 parameters uh, were tested, and it was found to be non-toxic. That is the quality part. Quantitatively, the sludge values after the entire seven to eight months run of the plant was achieved around 0.12 to 0.2 kgs per meter cube as against the average what we get from 30 to 40 kgs per meter cube. But of course, this involves the sludge from the biological as well. So this is the sludge reduction, what we see. And this is just a uh, 27, 23 seconds video when you can see the live plant here. The plant is running. Here we are taking water from this equalization tank of the CATP to TEDOX plant. This is primary treatment, the two-step TEDOX treatment, and this is the TEDOX treated. So such a small uh, setup and direct two-stage TEDOX treatment, and this is from the plant. So now just one slide showing what is the reason, what is being taking place. So this is the simple flow uh, process flow diagram, two-step process. We are also doing the primary stage one coagulation flocculation, but all uh, work has gone into what not to use. So we have avoided the use of ferrous and alum salts, which are the real culprits for the sludge. So this understanding we, has, we have to develop as a researcher and we have to convey to the wastewater treatment community. And then as having TSS removal by 90 to 95% in primary stage, we are going to the secondary stage where we are mixing certain nano materials, nano powdered materials in the effluent, contact time giving aeration and passing through a closed assembly which is called photocatalytic reactor, having suitable UV light radiation sources. And then separating the nano material, powdered material there at source and it is recycled with the same efficiency up to few months. This is another USP of this. So the simple science is what you see at the bottom is these nano materials, titanium dioxide are the material. And this system was developed during my own PhD from IIT Roorkee when I did in 2000 to 2005. So I developed the science of it and with my research scholars, particularly Nipun Bhargav is sitting here, to his credit, this is the first PhD from the Center of Excellence and on this technology development. So uh, simple sciences in the presence of UV light, water, everything is there. They naturally generate these hydroxyl radicals. You, we are not adding any chemicals to generate these hydroxyl radicals. Whereas in other technologies, you put various chemicals to generate hydroxyl radical. Fenton, photofenton, you are using ferrous salts, H2O2. None of them are being used. So, and then as a photocatalyst means this material is not part of the reaction. We are able to recover and reuse up to few months. So very less use of chemicals right in the primary. Again, very less use and reuse of the spent catalyst. This is the USP of technology. And hence we are getting so much reduction in sludge quantum. 
and simple signs we all know why color is not going because we are unable to break these organic moieties the bonds in our complex dye molecule and this leads to color and once we are able to break them color is going so what you see is a simple signs demonstrated in front of you so complex molecules are degraded and mineralized not converted into any other compound so this is simple signs now coming to the zld the challenges uh, which a zld imp uh, Im implementation has and the potential benefits which tedox can address so first challenge which comes to the industry is the space and the commercial viability of a zld plant so again these are the quantitative challenges and with tedox as you have seen we'll i'll come to that uh, in the uh, further slides in the case scenarios how it is benefiting so once we are able to remove the color and addressing making 50% reusable water which means the volume is reduced by 50% for zld so the, this reduces the volume and also the footprint of the tedox integration second problem comes with the energy demands and the environmental trade offs again we have the values with the zld system all these are industry driven data with references so what tedox can do because the main problem with zld is the color since color is coming until ro feed so it's a huge energy intensive process and makes the cost intensive so if we are able to remove the color right at the beginning before biological the load on tertiary will reduce and hence the cost and everything then third is the waste management challenge so with the proven results the sludge has the biggest advantage with drastic quantum reduction in sludge high carbon footprint for that we have we will be coming with the lc analysis and uh, we will be discussing it and operational sensitivity the tedox plant is robust in open you have seen functioning right from august february last year so now coming to this is based on the work so far for phase 1 now for phase 2 we propose that tedox to be integrated at a pre biological stage of the existing cetp utilizing the existing infrastructure so we will be only integrating tedox component and utilizing the existing infrastructure and upgrading it and then looking at the possibility how much is further zld required now very quickly coming to the lca which is a new study done um, for the first time uh, in this sector by us uh, in this area so lca this is the scope of refination so we are basically looking at the electrical consumption chemical consumption cod bod total nitrogen total phosphorus removal transportation of chemicals hazardous waste hazardous waste disposal direct reuse and disposal uh, of or the un uh, treated waste water for discharge so all these are taken care of these are various steps and you can see that this has been very duly uh, conducted as part of a submitted phd thesis as per all the iso norms and ipcc reports were uh, considered before taking up this study so this is a very well uh, quite a responsible data i suppose from our side we are presenting this is the model so modeling studies have been done again by uh, nipun and these are the modeling these are the uh, load assessment for every unit or process of waste water so you can see right from the chemical addition to direct emissions we have account for the treated water for reuse and discharge electrical energy supply for coal based all these have been taken care of sludge residue everything has been taken care of in the lc analysis you can see all this is the referred data which has been taken and these are the emission factors which have been account for a very scientific study again i would say has been done based on various softwares now coming to the results so with all an lc analysis what is the result so this is first scenario which is existing cetp and as we have seen the uh, discharge means non compliant so existing plant is this this is you can say a uh, uh, control scenario 2 if existing plant we want to implement zld this is scenario 2 just imagine this is the reason if we are asking ruma pollution control association to put zld they are not agreeing because in the existing situation when color is not being treated 
वी कैन नॉट इम्प्लीमेंट जेड एल डी डायरेक्टली जेड एल डी लगाना विल बी हाईली हाईली एनर्जी एंड रिसोर्स सफिशियंट विच रूमा कैन नॉट अफोर्ड सो नाउ कम्स सीनेरियो थ्री एंड एज द आउटकम्स ऑफ द पायलट फॉर लास्ट एट मंथस what we propose that if we integrate tadox what you see the tadox treated water will go to biological just imagine the main problem of color is removed toxicity is removed and almost 90 to 85% bod cod reductions are also met and then it will go to biological and then to ultra filtration which means we are removing the possibilities of use of sand filter carbon filter we have never used and we are not going to use here then what we propose if zld has to be implemented there then it should be done now with tadox at pre biological how will it benefit quantitative but then what is the uh, the cost implications here? coming next slide this is the carbon footprint and the cost so three scenarios i hope i i uh, ma'am i am clear on the three scenarios so second scenario is without any intervention we directly impose zld in the existing cetp third scenario if if we want to implement zld along with tadox then only it will be beneficial this result shows first scenario was your existing oh, control okay. as it is uh, non compliant cetp so second scenario is in the non compliant cetp if you implement zld what will be the so these are the Uh, results which have come from the lc analysis so biggest thing what you see in the tertiary treatment because the energy what we have taken is electrical energy in the tertiary so with tadox integration at pre biological and then you put zld plant you can see half reductions in the tertiary and primarily in the energy and results are in front of you and major gain is in the of course the residual pollutants which is drastically reduced and the tertiary treatment energy consumption shows the increase yes ma'am because currently uh, second scenario is control plus zld so if we put zld this is what uh, the key message from this session is if we are going to implement zld in the existing plant without improving its current status removing color improving its biological and we put zld drastic energy सीधे सामने आएगी बिकॉज इट इट इज नॉट रिमूविंग द कलर सो इट विल बी हाईली एनर्जी एंड रिसोर्स इंटेंसिव इफ यू पुट इट नाउ विदाउट एनी इंटरवेंशन वेर इज इन थर्ड सीनेरियो इफ यू पुट एडॉक्स एंड देन इम्प्लीमेंट एड एल डी अलॉन्ग विद इट सो नाउ लुकिंग एट दिस ओनली सी द बेनिफिट्स इन द वॉटर क्वालिटी यू हैव सीन टेडॉक्स हैज रिमूव द कलर नाइंटी परसेंट बी ओ डी रिडक्शन सी ओ डी आई एम जस्ट गोइंग बैक Uh, for the water quality parameters yeah this is the last result so what you see here is ma'am 95% almost 94% cod reduction with tedox bod reduction without any biological until now and this tedox treated water will go to biological ma'am here i have one question abhi after my presentation please note down hai na so um Uh, this disrupts actually so uh, bod and cod reductions up to 90 95% and this water will go to biological so the load on madam tertiary will be drastically reduced and also now coming back this with this water quality what we are assuming is 50% of the volume can be reused for direct various applications like dyeing uh, mercerization where industry is willing to accept these parameters however for zld remaining 50% so volume reduction is a bigger another big achievement which can so this will reduce so the let's say zld requirement of 1.55 mld it will reduce up to 700 around 700 kld zld plant will suffice as per our understanding so this is and of course this reduces the load and the burden on the association so with this finally i am concluding the presentation and with all these scientific findings and uh, humble efforts we have a very humble recommendation to uh, the regulator and we are fortunate to have with us representation from cpcb 
We look forward to more encouragement and incentivization of advanced oxidation process like TEDOX in wastewater treatment and here we are talking of textiles. Renewable energy integration with TEDOX with, will further benefit uh, in the cost and energy efficiency. ZLD guidelines, we look forward to its revision. 2015 was the first, now we'll, it's seven years and more, we want revision, we request revision. Then technical standards could be developed with the help of our studies and many others. GHG emission and carbon footprint should be part of the com uh, monitoring and compliance. And knowledge creation, training and capacity building of the CETP and plant operators is very much required if it could be part of the mandate. So that is a submission. Policy recommendation for the Ministry of Environment, uh, Forest and Climate Change is the an amendment in the regulatory norms, particularly the process amendment to effluent treatment norms to incentivize TEDOX kind of intervention, adoption and encouragement. Then a certification program for water and wastewater treatment technologies could be a very encouraging step. Business incentives could be given to various companies and associations with an eco-friendly technology like this. Financial incentives can be given to reduce uh, the adoption barriers for the SME sector and support for the startups could be a welcome change. And policy recommendation, Madam, for the Ministry of Textiles is we have these four policies already with the Ministry of Textiles and after working a lot with the Jaipur, Madam, we have worked for Jaipur, CETP, Bagru Cluster, Kanpur, many others. A lot of work, with a lot of work, this presentation is coming. And they have expressed willingness to adopt this technology, provided they get some support, 30 to 40 percent support from the ministry. So these are the four uh, policies already with the Ministry of Textile to bridge the gap between the early technology adopters and providers like us. So these are the various schemes with the Ministry of Textiles. I acknowledge great funding support from National Mission for Clean Ganga, Ministry of Jal Shakti for not just this project, for establishing the country's first center of excellence on water reuse. And uh, we continue to look forward to support and all guidance has always been there, Namami Gange program. This technology was developed through DST funding initially during uh, 2017 to 2020. Uh, so I acknowledge DST. This technology has also been um, selected by the Office of the Principal Scientific Advisor to Government of India and their drive, the Delhi Center has adopted this technology and we are working on various projects, small implementation of this technology in municipal and other sectors. ONGC was our first industry partner. Perfect group, I warmly welcome and acknowledge support from Mr. Praveen Bhargav, chairman sitting here. Right from 2016-17, they have been working and uh, developing this technology. And DU is our first licensee partner uh, for this technology. So I thank you all and look forward to coming together, working together, and making a progress. Thank you so much. Now I'm open to questions. Yeah, yeah, please. Biological uh, unit needs a lot of electricity to run, and we already reached around 11 BOD, uh, which is much better than many biological units which I have seen. So my compliments to you is that that this particular thing, the oxidation, because the color is challenge. I work a lot with bad dye cluster as scientist also and as the startup also. So uh, in my opinion, if you can say that if you can do a study where you can even remove that electricity part of biological unit, it will be further uh, benefiting. Well, certainly we'll explore, but yeah. this is uh, too early to say. And uh, second thing is the time for the biological can be also reduced. So if it is currently taking a few hours, six hours what we are getting or in a 20 KLD plant, if we are running at 1000 LPH to 20 hours, so that time, further biological Maybe. will take um, further less, otherwise total time from 48 hours can be reduced to 16 to 18 hours. 
so we cannot completely bypass biological because textile industry is something which has shock loads so today maybe the time this time the shade was different maybe next morning it could be a different shade so we might require biological so we cannot remove biological we'll work with the existing but definitely the benefits will come take its course any else yes sir Yes, 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 very, very, very well taken and good observation, sir. Sir, in the first, uh, when we are talking of energy consumption, here, uh, because what we have under, uh, undertaken while calculation is, that energy component, we have written energy consumption, it is for the running of the CETP. Because when we talk of ZLD, RO, and multi-factor evaporator, the energy cost comes from the uh, volume of the steam which is generated which is coal based so there comes the energy actually so me is a much bigger problem than ro itself so that part of energy is taken in the tertiary treatment as such so tertiary we have taken control plus tertiary therefore it is a separate case but why in third scenario is more than double that value? sir because in first scenario there is no tertiary taking place no and second, so two scenarios are, I'm again going to explain. Scenario one is as such, nothing is going to, what is the current CETP? Scenario two is, we are imposing a ZLD on an RPCA, Pollution Control Association. So that is the second scenario. Without helping them with anything in between and we are asking them to put ZLD. And this is the reason why ZLD is a very unwelcome gesture uh, by a textile industry. So if we can help them with our scientific technological inputs, we are providing a possibility for a textile industry that yes, ZLD is possible. So this is the possibility. And with net zero, what, when we say net zero, we are talking of energy efficiency. So fourth scenario is actually third is another, if we can integrate solar in this, uh, TEDx, further 40% cost reductions are estimated. So it's almost a net zero in terms of cost and energy. Yes, please, mic over there. It's a closed room, you can speak. Yeah. Congratulations on your pilot Thank you, sir. Very great Just wanted to understand, um, how do you plan on um, uh, deploying, or uh, deploying at a further scale, or scaling it up further? for other companies to be able to adapt it and commercializing this technology. Uh, thank you. Uh, so regarding the deployment, uh, right at the first stage, we want to take, this was phase one, and uh, very soon our funding partners are there. So we would like to take it to phase two and implement this technology in the CETP with this integration plan. So that will be phase two. And parallelly, uh, as a research organization, Various, this is a patented technology from Terry. So various licensee partners and companies have a, uh, they are approaching us to take license and deploy. So already first license agreement has been signed. We are looking for more partners. So maybe um, more partners very soon for deployment. Yes, sir. Regarding power consumption, like, like if, yes, we know this TEDx is a good system. It works very well, and it addresses the uh, most difficult issue, uh, which is the color in textile industry. So, so I, I mean, there are n number of solutions available in, in the market. Only the question is affordability. Yes. Sir. Okay. And when we when we say like this system is more affordable, we should we should have at least presented few numbers in terms of OPEX, okay, this is the OPEX per kiloliter or per uh, so per meter cube presented? of the, no, in, in that like I couldn't understand what uh, what was the unit where you compared three different scenarios. I think you used some uh, carbon emissions per ton or something like that. Instead of that, if you can make it very simple, okay, in scenario one, 
वन वन यूनिट वन किलो वाट आर पर क्यूबिक मीटर इज पावर कंजप्शन इन सीनेरियो टू इट इज टू और थ्री और इन सीनेरियो थ्री इट इज फाइव सो सो दैट विल बी दैट विल बी इजी फॉर द डिसीजन मेकर टू टेक अ डिसीजन इन दिस रिगार्ड एज हियर इज द वैल्यू ओके ओके सो मे बी आई माइट ओके so but but here also if you if i was trying to calculate how like you said okay 0.009 kilowatt r per kg of cod reduction it's very difficult for me to calculate i i i i, I was trying to calculate okay uh, uh, so i'll tell you i i you know, i i'm coming to that like okay maybe there are experts uh, of the field also they can they can um, let us know even if we consider 1000 mg cod it is 1 kg cod which we have to reduce or uh, remove per meter cube of the water so it means 9 9 unit 9 kilowatt uh, per cubic meter that is broadly if, yeah, if we have to compare so coming. if it, it if it comes in terms of uh, cubic meter or per per uh, kiloliter it will be very easy for us to understand okay ki abhi mera itna kharcha ho raha hai abhi mera itna kharcha hoga so textile clusters now like we have only experience of two three clusters but since madam is here sir is here are uh, the textile cluster have more uh, 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 like issue with operation and maintenance cost uh, so so if if we can present in that and that was the comment on pilot also like when this pilot project was being concluded ma'am uh, the the major uh, observation which we were uh, we have yet to uh, i like i think we are working is the like power cost so if, if you compare it with the conventional system power cost was 8 to 9 times so so we also had like we no we sir it was 3 kilowatt hour currently which rpc okay, is using okay may, maybe maybe but 3 to 8 okay so a, i took 8 and that too also in, in the pilot okay i agree i my my mistake i said initially it was 1 huh. and when the report which i and anal, we analyzed at that time it was 8 so again 8 times the, again again i discussed this issue with not only with you but other industry experts also where the their expertise can come and help us in knowing and exactly. optimizing that cost i fully agree the tedox has as as a pre treatment unit it has several advantages you will not get color and if you will not get color the public acceptance will be very very high you can have a reduced cost in uh, your uh, tertiary operation whether it is a uf ro or or exactly. or, or, or jdld also now that salt and like like so still we have to evolve in that case uh, the second thing like which ad mad madam was mentioning if like we mentioned bod we have achieved bod of 11 we are perfectly okay then then we don't need a biological system uh, so so if if we are very sure we can achieve 11 why do we need a complex biological system but but exactly. but i'll tell you why everybody like biological the reason being microbes are the only thing which works for, in free for you exactly. and that is the cheapest most economical solution that's why everybody goes for biological so so i agree like uh, with with tedox as a pre treatment the biodegradability of effluent increases and we have a better reduction in cod or bod whatever i mean cod and bod both are linked so there are still many questions which have to be answered may not be only by terry we understand i was also a phd student at that time i also had like i cannot we are we cannot be expert of every every field so we have to pose our challenges or risks which we are seeing as of now to the market there are experts i discussed this with vijay also and i told him like how can we optimize this power yes, if sir. we can optimize this power i think this is a game changer solution so there are many questions and we were thinking like okay uh, i could see uh, i know like most of them and there are many experts who are here who can help us in yes, in, in this yes, Field. So I think uh, these were the my few observations uh, uh, on sir. this. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank so you. I have a very quick answer to all three points. First is, uh, sir, this was uh, a pilot, and this the objective of phase one project was to demo. First, actually, it was believe me, 17th February was the first time when water was coming out of the plant, and an MCG visit was expected. So it was a Chandrayaan moment for us. Believe me. what water will come out honestly i'm telling you so as a researcher as a first attempt in the world first of all we should appreciate with the funding support of nncg the first objective was to demonstrate this technology uh, in a running pilot continuous mode for all these months so that is achieved second objective was because first time so cod reduction of less than 
कलर रिमूवल इम्प्रूविंग बायोडिग्रेडेबिलिटी दीज आर द ऑब्जेक्ट विच वी हैव मेट एंड नाउ कमिंग टू द पॉइंट वेन इट विल गो टू स्केल ऑफ इकोनॉमीज सी दिस इज द साइंस now we need good engineering epc companies to come with us our science and their engineering will improve the energy efficiency and second very important point sir what you see 8 kilowatt first of all what rpc a currently energy is consumption is 3 kilowatt r per uh, meter cube we are having 8 and why why this is 8 because the challenge was to demonstrate m2 and tedox when tedox will be had it been shown with biological energy hum utni cod utna per kg reduction hi nahi karte utna ghanta chalate hi nahi because aage hame pata tha ki biological pe jata but abhi kyunki first objective was to n2 and tedox was the objective isliye usko saaf pani karke dikhana hamari zimmedari thi ab kya hoga jab phase 2 mein tedox biological mein lagega to ye energy jo 8 aa rahi hai industry ki jo 3 hai हमारी एट आ रही है इट विल अभी की अभी हम बता सकते हैं ये आपकी छ हो जाएगी और उसमें हम बात कर रहे हैं यदि सोलर लगा दें तो वापस इनके थ्री के बराबर आ जाएगी सो so, सब कुछ वैसी हो जाएगा यदि ये दो इंटीग्रेशन हम कर दें और हो सकता है जेड एल डी की भी जरूरत ना पड़े इस एट फेज टू बट विल सी विल डिस्कस दीज टेक्निकलिटीज एंड थर्ड पॉइंट इज अबाउट द ऑप्टिमाइजेशन दिस इज अ पायलट स्टडी a ongoing process is this is an ongoing process so we really need good companies epc companies to help us in engineering uh, and deploy any other so no questions can we move forward uh i like, like every time when we say okay if we can achieve uh, the desired regulatory limits with biological or secondary then objective of tertiary or zld is totally different it's not to meet the regulatory requirements exactly. it's it's to reuse the water and okay maybe in in certain conditions where the per applicable permits are not there to dispose the treated effluent we have a zld requirement so you rightly mentioned energy uh, will is still um, uh, remain a big concern for us and uh, I, I mean, uh, you can you can you can compare uh, the data which is available. I'll 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 just like to take one more minute, but but I'll like to compare the data which we are generating in this plant with the uh, uh, the big uh, CTP uh, for uh, textile. I think uh, Madam can help. Like in Ludhiana also, there are uh, three big CTPs in uh, for um, 50 mld, 40 mld, and uh, I think 15 mld, and then there are two in uh, Panipat. so 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 we have to compare what is exist like like what is already there in the market what type of challenge they are facing and uh, and and uh, then again uh, maybe we will will we'll discuss uh, <laughs> we can discuss many other points with you and whatever the input is available with us we'll share sir, it with sir, you definitely. for for a optimum solution Defin thank and you and sir all the answers uh, about the energy cost you can put as the objective for phase 2 he you have to achieve this much energy as comparable to panipat we'll achieve you put the cost in phase 2 that we'll take it so <laughs> what you will say we'll achieve you just give us no, phase 2 no, no. <laughs> that doesn't happen in science my wish list is say no, 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 no. sir it I, is a proven okay. i'm saying on the basis of scientific evidence and work not emotional content uh, emotions have driven me for last 10 years to work for namami gange so can we move ahead Gujarat, we have CTP speakers people were telling me ma'am do paisa mein kuch bhi treat karne ke liye dogi na hum le lenge so what i am trying to do is uh, my route is biological because since i am biotechnologist i was studying with them uh, the anaerobic degradation so i could able to do a lot of things 50% reduction bina koi energy lagaye aa jata hai unko and then they can go to the biological and then they i try to Uh, reduce their sludge management because sludge ko maine anaerobic kara diya so we are also trying to work with them and these cluster really need help scientific and uh, second sir this uh, pilots this that we scale. also don't know how how to scale and ma'am uh, as thing, a scientist we can do the science but yes engineering firms are required and more. secondly sir this is the non compliant plant tabhi to main keh rahi hu so we cannot compare ki kis cost pe and secondly sir always a cost of action cost of action will always be more than a little inaction so thank you so much we move ahead uh, with the session
and uh, coming to the next uh, mitali over to you again uh, please thank you, you ma'am for this overview of this unique project and thanks Thank you to all delegates for this meaningful de discussion. Now, due to last minute agencies, Mr. G. Ashok Kumar, Director General, National Mission for Na Clean Ganga, Ministry of Jal Shakti, Government of India, could not be here, but he has sent us a short video message. I request the AD team to kindly play the uh, message from DGNMCG. Good evening, everybody. I convey my wishes to DGNMCG and the team for organizing the 23rd edition of the annual flagship program of Peri, the World Sustainable Development Summit, which will focus on the theme of sustainable development and climate justice. I'm happy to note that this event that was inaugurated by Sri Jagdeep Mendeji, uh, who is the Vice President of India. I also, also convey my greetings to all distinguished uh, panelists and audience present here to attend the panel discussion on the launch of the policy paper title, Green Implementation of Tadox Technology in Textile and Dime Industry. The Tadox is uh, very close to NMCG because we were the one who first piloted it. And uh, we are, uh, in fact, my association with Tadox Technology is, uh, is uh, much more older as um, the mission director of the National Water Mission. Tadox Technology was the second of the technology papers presented in the Water Tech Talk which uh, we have initiated uh, in, NMC, uh, in uh, National Automation. The policy paper encapsulates the efforts of Namabangi's initiatives to keep Ganga and its tributaries uh, pollution free. In 2020, Terry Tadox Technology was awarded a pilot project to implement a 20 KL Tadox at Ruma Textile Cluster and Kanpur. Um, uh, the Kanpur is uh, Kanpur city is famous for tanneries, but there is also a lot of textiles there in, uh, in the Ruma cluster. There is a lot of pollution uh, happening in those areas. The project was sanctioned to understand the feasibility and scalability of Tadox technology to advance uh, the performing of the performance of the existing um, CTP, the industrial clusters in the Ganga Basin. Um, the major polluting industries in uh, India are the tanneries, paper pulp, textile, etc. So, 20% of India's freshwater pollution is attributed to textile in uh, industries. In uh, Ganga Basin as well, textile industries uh, were one of the major contributors of pollution uh, to Ganga and its tributaries. Acknowledging the need to compact industrial water pollution, Namami Ganga has identified about 3,186 grossly polluting industries on the inner basin, which are regularly monitored through water quality monitoring systems. In fact, uh, the PRAYAG or the Platform for Real Time Analysis for the uh, 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 Yamuna and Ganga and the Tributaries uh, platform, which uh, we have uh, started using and installed in the NMCG office uh, since uh, uh, April 2022. Uh, has uh, a, a, port, uh, a portal to display uh, the uh, the 3,084 uh, closely polluting industries, uh, their 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 uh, quality of the water from the STPs, etc., and it's being monitored very very regularly. The common effluent treatment plan built for textiles and primary industries. Uh, uh, are actually the most critical among all these uh, interventions we make. The reduction in water usage and recovery of resources are promoted in paper pulp, sugar, leather and tannery industries and thermal power plants as part of the Earth Ganga project of the uh, Namami Gange. Adopting the holistic approach and leaving no stone unturned, Namami Gange is exploring R&Ds, various R&D solutions such as novel technologies of TEDx, which can supplement the efforts of incendiary pollution abatement through CETPs and better performance in the long run. Uh, we have our component of Sea uh, Ganga, uh, the technical partner of IIT, with Khan, IIT Kanpur, who also run, does this e e evaluation of uh, uh, ETV program where the technologies are evaluated and then recommended for use in, uh, in uh, various uh, STPs and industry clusters. So uh, now, this Netadox is another technology which uh, we uh, promoted through the 
the dairy and uh, along with that we have set, set up these uh, center of excellence and uh, TADOC is being promoted uh, to the, um, the national uh, center of excellence in water use popularly known as NTCOE. Um, the national um, uh, the NTCOE on water reuse is in alliance between Namami Genge and Terry, industrial partners and industrial representative bodies. It's working to become a globally recognized center to, for the reuse of wastewater by bridging the technology gap, nurturing innovation, supporting targeted research and act as an interface among various stakeholders. Uh, with the stake with these efforts towards industrial pollution abatement, I hope to achieve that uh, the overall aim of rejuvenating Ghana and its tributaries. I once again congratulate uh, the team Terry for organizing this panel discussion and everyone involved in preparation of the and launch of the policy paper. I also congratulate uh, Dr. Nupur Bahadur, the pioneering, pioneering uh, scientist behind this program who had been very, very passionate about the new technology which uh, her team had developed. She had been uh, in forefront in promoting and, uh, and this uh, technology which has a lot of benefits uh, which can uh, actually the, the, the materials which can be recycled and uh, uh, has uh, potential uh, very uh, has potential to become one of the game changers in the uh, uh, in the industrial uh, effluent treatment plants once again i wish uh, a team great success and hope that this uh, tedox technology would be accepted by more and more par partners more and more companies and would be very popular as uh, part of the Make in India program because the Ardham River program with the Honorable Prime Minister has been promoting and, and telling us today do this is a wonderful example of that. So TADAP, which is a homegrown uh, technology developed in space in, in Terry, would be a very, very uh, classic example of the Ardham River Bharat. Once again, I wish all of you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Rajiv Ranjan Mishra, former Director General of National Mission for Clean Ganga, and also advisor to NMCG Terry Center of Excellence on Water Use, to deliver the keynote address. Uh, hello, everyone. I think I was just asking ki sab kuch to ho gaya. She has made presentation, question answer bhi ho gaya. All the clarifications are also over. Then what is there for me to now speak? But so what I will do, I will basically rec recollect some of the things. And it, it's very good because we are having a really very good set of uh, pe people, ministries. Long time back, I was telling Prozacta, 20 years back, I was in Ministry of Textile. Around 10 years back, I was in MOEF. Of course, with MOEF, I have been continuously interacting at JS. So I think uh, we, are, we are all, and uh, Nupur has uh, brought all old friends together. So it's a great, it's, it's a great <laughs> to be here. See, and your questions were very nice, and what she presented. So instead of, um, see, Today we are meeting in the Sustainability Summit. I mean, three day, it's a very, Terry's most prestigious um, uh, annual event. Now, and, and we, we are really talking on a very important area which is often neglected. I was in MOEF in 2013-14, that was the time the JLD norm and guidelines were being developed. And also this, uh, out, out of a kind of frustration or out of urge to regulate industries, OCEMS was also launched at that point of time. I think now 10 years are over, so lots of implementation has happened. When I was in Namami Ganga Mission, see, you deal with, I, mean, I will not talk about Namami Ganga because it's a very separate thing, but looking at the Nirmal part, I mean the pollution abatement part, two major challenges are always there with you the wastewater, domestic wastewater, which is a much larger in volume, almost. I think Praveen is here, so all these technical people say 70% is that and 20% or 10% is industrial. All those data and literature has been going on. God knows what exactly is the volume. But 
the challenge is often people are more concerned about uh, these uh, nalas and then the sewage flowing into that, that wastewater, and then there is a whole lot of conventional way of treating them and biological treatment. We discussed a lot just now about the biological treatment having certain advantages, then microbes are free and all, all those kind of things. But always there is, has been a discussion about industrial pollution. And uh, many of you are part of that. Tannery came to first level. But when we started looking at the polluting industry, the GPIs, textile is also very important. And if you look at tanneries, textiles, paper and pulp, distilleries, these are some of the polluting industries and then there are several clusters. So I think while working on dealing with the sewage treatment and getting several things, uh, initiatives and making STPs ready, textile though volume may be less, textile or industry though volume may be less, but they are very toxic. It's not easy to treat them. There, there's the hazards are much, much many times more than uh, your biological pollution. And, the, and then another problem here is challenges. Every industry is different, so the kind of pollutants, the kind of organic, inorganic uh, compounds will be different, specific. So primarily what you have to do, you have to think and you have to design a specific to a particular industry. Another challenge which we always faced, I think Farukhabad, if I remember correctly, Farukhabad STP be sanctioned under hybrid immunity. That's where I will bring private parties also. Now in that, that was a hybrid immunity project. But the person, the consortium were not coming forward because they are giving an output that you have to treat it and bring BOD to level of 10 or whatever. Now they say, and that's, that's all over India you have this problem, there is a mix. There is an industrial water which also comes in the sewage. So I, and as long as it's a government funded project, no one is bothered because you will anyway do it. When you are investing, bringing money and putting it in your STP construction, then the private operator, the concessionaire is very cautious that what to do with this? With this I will not be able to meet the output and my own investment will go away. So, so that was the challenge and then we realized it's a huge problem. So I think we may push some problems below the carpet or postpone the solution for after five years, but these problems are real problems and they will always haunt you. So that's why when this kind of uh, technology is being developed, TEDx or there may be several other technology, we set up a kind of system that we will, uh, what President DG was telling you, the ETV process. Because when uh, Honorable Prime Minister launched Namami Gange, I was there at that point also, suddenly we were flooded with lots of suggestions. Technology providers. I think everyone knew how to clean Ganga except the people working in the Ganga mission. <laughs> I mean, and that, that's this kind of thing which happens. And I am telling mainly from, because from the, I am talking from the policy makers point of view, you are mission director, you are DZ, you have to show results. So, but fortunately this mission gave little uh, leverage to the director general, some sort of flexibility. We were really empowered in 2018-19. So, so when this particular thing came, I mean, we are discussing so nicely, so analytically, and then we will further here. The thing was, should we invest into this kind of thing? It, it's always a chicken egg story that you show the result, then I will give you money. How will I show result if I don't get a chance to implement? So someone has to build the cat. Someone has to do that and NMCG was in a position to invest some money and take the risk. Of course, we also tried to cover because Projecta is here. She is a fellow bureaucrat. You have to also build some record before you take a decision like that. So we had IIT Kanpur, C Ganga, some sort of ETV process. So we got some sort of support. Now you people in this room, you are in a much better condition because phase one is over. Some results have come. Some results are so good, some results are needs further improvement. Like your BO deduction is really very great. And you are very right, madam, to say that if it is 11, then uh, earlier, before NGT new norm, we used to treat the, the effluent uh, BOD with up to 20 we used to treat. Now only 10 has become the limit. So I think uh, th that that's very good. Now the thing is, we have to, in this group, because we are having policy makers, we are having regulators, we are having industry representative, keeping this whole thing in mind, and then she has also given you certain policy, some recommendations, etc. has come, some paper will be released. Now the thing is, what is the way ahead? Where should we go from here? I will tell you now the NGT norm. See, industries are polluting. First of all, if you go strictly by the law of the land, these industries which are not meeting norm, they have no business to be in business. This will be closed. 
we can take that view also but it's not a very practical view because when you talk of textile industry it's a great contributor to gdp and more than that employment it's a huge employment generating thing tenderies so if you simply close it then also if you think not think from the nmcj point of view nmcj dg will be happy to close the industry and his problem is solved but overall problem is not solved so that's why in kanpur also be invested in some sort of coe to improve the process of tenderies i think cpcb is here we came up with a kind of charter for paper and pulp industry so i think what was happening bringing industry along with you to have a kind of self imposed target so paper and pulp we could reduce the consumption reduce the water generation and all these things this jdld is a very good initiator because jdld and reuse are very important because once you start getting into reuse automatically you will become more efficient because what you are producing if someone is able to reuse that means it is not absolutely waste or harmful it is having some value so i think that is very important that we discuss it we have got several textile clusters we have got several other industrial clusters now the challenge which i see at this point with before any new technology and more particularly tidox is how we actually reduce the cost the technical values are all looking fine the only way to reduce that cost of anything is to practice to scale it up to use in different types of things and then uh, i think some movie was there i know tidox has been used for several other operation also not only in textiles so i think and everywhere some sort of value some sort of positive output is coming so i think the thing is how we take it forward is basically maybe in phase 2 you do that and it's very good thing that in energy seems to be a major thing and energy and capital intensive nature is a major problem in achieving a jdld and that's the major thing where the industries are also opposing opposing means they are reluctant because it's a question of selling their product and making profit anyone is in business for doing profit but here my suggestion would be to the industry also because you also have a responsibility for the environmental sustainability so i think you you cannot be doing business as usual because law does not permit you you have to invest some money it should be reasonable for which government has to give you some support but that reasonable thing unless if you keep on violating law then naturally regulator will be there and they will they will take their own action nmcg also was responsible for closing some industries so i think that is where where the industry has to also find value you also have to come forward this was you sent to invest some small amount to practice it to 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 invest it and see it because the the only way it will stabilize is to get more data and the more data will come on, once you start applying it uh, more often uh, and slowly we scale it up i think we have seen in several industry once you scale it up its value comes cost comes whether it is computer whether it is any other thing or led or this thing so i think one very important thing is especially when the country is talking so much about renewables if we try to seriously look at i mean one thing is general bis list but working out numbers working out details about how to reduce energy cost there are different ways and this renewable will certainly bring it idea is you have to become competitive then industry also will find some value first of all they are not doing their business in the illegal manner they become authorized and second thing is they are also having something to do with the i mean cost effectiveness because they are their product is also not going to become so costly so in my opinion this is a very good group where you have got regulators where you have got uh, industry association where you have got uh, several experts here i think I, I, the what expertise you need everyone is there in this room so i think it, it's it's important to deliberate the benefit i think here the mindset should be we have reached somewhere we have moved in positive direction we, and it's not only emotional positive direction you have hard data to show that you are po uh, you have achieved something positive now look at what are the other sectors other stakeholders how we can who can do what and this policy paper which she has just shown or we are going to release we must really think about implementing this policy but normally we are very happy and we we very fashionable to release some policy documents whether people will use it whether people will implement it that is something which is very important and that is where perhaps we have to develop some sort of working group something where these different stakeholders are there and you contribute and with this kind of idea only we had nmcg again had invested in center of excellence on reuse 
so the we say reuse it can be treated waste water domestic water it could be industrial water it can so i think that's this already an institution this already a forum to do further research to do further experimentation to do several other things but thing is we are seeing result positive results not only on emotions but also with the hard data now thing is someone has to invest some more money and do it because one researcher one scientist will not able to do it we sometimes invest a lot of money in something which is not proven though it is very rare but yes sometimes they also are lucky so idea is please deliberate in the next things and then continue this session with some sort of in a small group with some sort of exchange get a kind of a standing some sort of uh, forum where you can contribute because these things cannot be decided in the meeting like this lots of hard numbers will be there lots of analysis will be there how we can bringing more private people what how much government can do how much i mean some of the lots of a very large wish list there about incentives so we have to look at those incentives how much is doable because typically the finance will be very very rigid in giving any incentives so i think if you go to the finance with proposing this policy is implementing this policy you have to be having extremely good supportive data and very objective data scientific data to convince them that if you do this what is the benefit so look at if you would give this incentive what is going to happen how much of industry is going to have a kind of uh, compliance what kind of value textile industry will get what kind of impact on economy will be there so i think we'll have to do work on all these things to finally reach a, a particular point of view so i just thought i will share some of the things how it all started and how it happened and what we are deliberating today the kind of questions pravin is asking is very relevant questions because he has to convince someone else also so i think these are the nice questions but ultimately we have to answer this question and take a step to move ahead because if you leave it at this stage it will be really a same that after achieving so much we don't really scale it up this is a great opportunity to scale it up and it's very good that cpcb is involved right from beginning because i think getting the best one another very strong and very um, uh, successful way will be there to get into the regulation policy regulation because then people also uh, of course i am quite aware people find some way out to who to bring that regulation also I and mean, we are all very imaginative people in our country but regulation has to be there and then once you lay down the regulation it will happen but sometimes we have to also review those regulations have can we include something looking at the development of last 10 years can we delete something can we modify something so i think it has to be dynamic because the problem is very dynamic very complex uh, and uh, the solution also has to be very agile kind of thing to take it forward so i, I am really once again i congratulate nupur congratulate uh, your center and nmcg though for for actually taking that risk that first step and moving it so this has enabled that we are in a position to discuss it with numbers otherwise it would have been always uh, some theoretical discussion but now it's a practical it's a reality and we have to move beyond that thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you sir for your inspiring words now may i request all the distinguished speakers present on the dais to come forward to release the policy brief titled integration of tedox technology to achieve net zero in textile wastewater treatment policy recommendations based on pilot study and life cycle assessment in a catp uh, i would just like to add uh, two more dignitaries on the dais uh, pravin sir representing nmcg ni sir is there sir is there but uh, dg nmcg sir has nominated you i am fast you are present to future <laughs> and second very important person uh, chairman of perfect group the company who implemented this project on field so mr pravin bhargav i request you <laughs> and not the least my phd student nipun so it's a basically a student teacher success story which i want to take forward from here teacher developed the science student developed the technology so nipun please come can we have more copies hey aur bhi hai 10 the i had already planned please sir sabke liye main have already planned tha
This policy brief offers policy recommendations for treating textile and dyeing wastewater and achieving zero discharge, liquid discharge and enhancing water reuse based on our pilot demonstration in a 20 KLD TEDOX technology plan in a RUMA CETP, uh, in a CETP in RUMA Kanpur. Moving on, it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Prajakta L. Verma, Joint Secretary of Ministry of Textiles to the stage for her valuable insights based on policy and strategy perspective. Her role is very critical in the Ministry of Textile as a sustainability leader. Please, ma'am. So respected dais, uh, the passionate team of Terry represented by Dr. Nupur <laughs> and um, all the stakeholders who have come together uh, for deliberating on uh, the way ahead for improving our uh, water use efficiency in the textile and apparel industry. Thank you, first of all, Terry, for giving me this opportunity to be here. Uh, I would say that um, since I have joined uh, in textiles uh, ministry, uh, and I have been handling uh, natural fibers, has been my original charge, is my original charge, but I think my, uh, since I have got a sustainability and circularity vertical also, I think my charge has really been uh, more, uh, I've been more occupied with the issues of sustainability and circularity. Uh, and I would say that just uh, when I joined, um, uh, and I was understanding, uh, I was understanding natural fibers, and I was visiting, uh, you know, the uh, farms of cotton and jute. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, water is such a, is something which is so uh, endemic to every stakeholder, and uh, I, I just can't help but recollect, you know, my, my journey in my career began in a very drought uh, prone area. Uh, uh, and uh, I really have seen water in the eyes of the villagers, but no water around. And it was such a pathetic situation where we were struggling as administrators to manage uh, the scarce resource so much so that I remember that in about 163 villages, I had about 260 tankers. And they were all coming from very far off places because the groundwater had really depleted so much. The water supply schemes had failed. Not just that, its impact was such that even in the government hospitals, operations had to be staggered because there was no water for operations. Uh, the impact was so much that in the place where I was, it was a tradition, it was a beer industry, Aurangabad district, where uh, they were exporting beer. It was a beer uh, manufacturing uh, hub. But because of uh, no water during those times, uh, they also had to halt their operations. What I'm trying to say is that this resource has impact uh, on the livelihood of and on the on on our people on the farming community on the industrial manufacturing uh, uh, um, processes uh, at that point of time of course my stakeholder in front of me was of course the public and the common man and his drinking water but while we were trying to balance this need uh, uh, for drinking water I also realized that um, everything else had just halted. The production, the economic activities had to really take a back seat. And coming from there, uh, when I'm here uh, in the textile industry, uh, when I joined and I was reading, trying to understand my sector, uh, of course, we are a very important contributor to uh, uh, the economy of our country. We have been a very traditional industry. As Mishra Sab said that we are a very important, uh, we play a very important role in terms of environment, uh, in terms of employment generation, uh, the entire value chain. But at the same time, now we are increasingly, uh, you know, facing and living up to the fact that we are also contributing very heavily on the environmental footprint. UNEP has also very really recently, uh, you know, identified the hotspots in the entire value chain for our country in the textile sector. 
and uh, uh, also the fact that uh, there the number of global regulations for our industry uh, is increasing with the European Union's uh, directives and our compliance uh, in our sector is also quite huge. I find that uh, a lot of um, discourse has begun and rightly so, Chandrima is here, we have been uh, meeting and we have been trying to understand how to, uh, you know, uh, capacity building, how do we create, um, you know, the, uh, um, the awareness among our sector because we are also a very fragmented sector. We are having a very decentralized uh, MSME sector. I would also say that when I go around, I'm really surprised, you know, because there are some very good success stories very good case studies, you know, which, uh, 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 I mean, there are, uh, not, it's not just about compliance, but uh, trying to understand how to be competitive. We, our industry and textile sector very operates on very thin margins, you know, and uh, being cost competitive is very important. So uh, we find that uh, compliance in spite of these thin margins is really commendable. The industry is trying to understand how to be export competitive within the uh, uh, cost framework and uh, with these directives of sustainability, I find that many of these clusters also have been very compliant on the social governance aspects, you know. So uh, we are uh, making strides in this and we are also, uh, I would say that there are some new sunrise sectors like technical textiles where the industry is trying to innovate. We also find uh, that this, uh, our landscape is actually punctuated by a lot of startups, you know, and there are a lot of women led uh, innovators coming in. In fact, I'm throwing open an innovation challenge just uh, on the eve of Bharat Techs and we are trying to identify some of the problem statements and try and see how we can really get the startups to think about these problems. So uh, in the sustainability and the circularity space, we are definitely uh, having our own islands of success, but at the same time, we are aware that there are challenges ahead. In this context, I would say that our uh, technology upgradation fund scheme, you know, has played a very important role in helping uh, especially our power loom sector to migrate to, the, to a better technology. And we find that, uh, like my technical team was mentioning, that uh, we have uh, definitely, uh, you know, funded and assisted the industry to have more resource efficient technology coming in there in the ATAF uh, scheme. And now that when we are at the brink of a new scheme, uh, we are also trying to understand how do we incentivize the industry to adopt technologies such as this. As you are all aware that the Government of India is now thinking more in the production linked incentive scheme where we want to try to incentivize more and more better, more and more output. At the same time, I would also like to say that it's not just about more output, it is also about less wastage, using less resources, how do you minimize the output where, where you know, it's uh, where, uh, like when we are talking about minimum governance, how do we also minimize our wastages, how do we uh, reduce our fresh water use, how do we incentivize these sort of behaviors is also something that we would like to incorporate in our output. So output oriented uh, incentives does not just mean more production, it also means using less resources for producing uh, what you want to. So. And the industry is definitely geared up and understanding. Uh, so when I talk to them, I think the most important challenge that currently the big players as well as MSMEs are facing is the water use uh, efficiency and how uh, do we uh, really help them, you know, transition uh, to this, especially uh, with, with so much of competing demands for fresh water uh, and the, uh, the, the depleting uh, groundwater table. We know that we have regulatory frameworks in place uh, we as I remember, I still remember that I had uh, closed off the uh, the bore wells of so many influential people when I was handling the drought management of my and you know, I had to explain to my higher ups as to why I have done that because okay, I was I stood my ground and uh, I did not allow my position to be diluted. I convinced my my uh, higher ups that this needs to be done to protect the water source. So these sort of regulatory frameworks are there and it also depends upon the person behind the regulatory framework to implement it in full spirit. But given that this is not really a very uh, long term solution uh, uh, to this, we need to have better synergies uh, between institutions, between the civil society, the industry uh, and the technology providers so that we create that sort of 
because uh, what I understand from the conversation is that there is always an element of risk involved in adopting uh, something which, um, uh, but, but as Nupur mentioned that, you know, yaha tak we have reached, you know, and they have solid data to back it up. In fact, I just, Abhijit, you have, I was just having a VC with the IIT uh, uh, HOD uh, of the textile division where we are trying to uh, create a roadmap for the water use efficiency for our <coughs> sector. As you know that the National Water Mission has given us a goal that, you know, we should try and optimize the water use to over 20%, you know. So in that context, uh, we were trying to understand how do we really create this roadmap. But the lack of data, the lack of, you know, we have not really measured, uh, you know, what is our water usage, how efficient we are, how so as to understand where we can go. These sort of uh, data invisibility also adds to the complications. But if we all um, understand that uh, this is a common goal and it only can only be achieved by collaborative efforts. So, um, in this context, I would like to mention that, uh, and I was telling Dr. Nupur also, that we have a very important uh, uh, exhibition come um, uh, knowledge management uh, show, which is coming up called Bharat Tex. And uh, we would like to showcase uh, to the, because the entire industry will be here, there will be global players, there will be the, uh, it's a B2B event with a lot of MSME clusters coming in, and it's for the first time that we'll be showcasing uh, so many innovations, especially we are trying to showcase innovations on in the sustainability and the circularity front. In fact, when we talk about startups, we only think about fintechs. But in fact, when I started uh, going around and trying to understand my sector, I found quite a few uh, entrepreneurs who had tried to understand how to convert waste into, you know, a resource and how to create products out of it. They were diverting waste from landfill in their own small way, but definitely the thought was there. So. Uh, we are trying to uh, get all these stakeholders on the stage and I was mentioning it would be a good idea if we also showcase the uh, the technologies uh, because we, this has already been selected by uh, the National Mission for Clean Ganga and the Center of Excellence. So we can definitely have a space to showcase these uh, uh, technologies which are very promising. Of course, uh, the industry uh, and their viewpoint uh, also needs to be uh, considered, it needs to be more, there should be uh, a fair amount of brainstorming in the future, I suppose that, uh, but without uh, the research being complemented by application and by industrial action, uh, we will not be really able to achieve the efficiency required. But it is a uh, interesting, uh, it's a very interesting forum on which I've been invited. I'm uh, very happy to be here to understand that a lot of strategic thinking is really going on at the government of India level and uh, especially for uh, in a project mode we would like to incorporate uh, these uh, thoughts and these uh, um, these initiatives even in our future policies as I mentioned that like we are also trying to um, sort of uh, uh, ATUFs and TUFs was very well uh, uh, received by the industry there's a lot of request for uh, you know, uh, for uh, uh, extending uh, this uh, scheme, and we want to give, uh, uh, we want to really bring out a scheme with the, uh, which uh, with uh, trying to incentivize technology, which is basically sustainable, which will help help uh, sustainable production, and with that uh, thought process in mind, we would uh, we'll try and see how we can actually involve these sort of innovations uh, into it. Uh, finally, uh, uh, I'm very happy that, you know, this forum uh, will throw up new uh, uh, journey ahead for adoption of this uh, technology. We would, I would be very happy to understand the way forward, the progress of what is, you know, happening. And if there's any support required from the ministry for more coordination, we have a technical arm that is a textile commissioner and the textile committee offices, which are all spread pan India. More collaboration with our offices also for better acceptability uh, of these technologies uh, the, because uh, what from whatever i can understand is that the class there was a uh, there was a cluster development program which was earlier implemented by the textile commissioner's office which uh, the regional offices of the textile commissioner's office used to actually handhold the clusters and used to help them navigate uh, you know and uh, navigate the risk landscape the, the landscape which uh, you know, help them to get new technologies because any adoption, any decision is having a risk for the for them. Especially with smaller players, the risk appetite also is very less, 
and again the margins are so poor so less so thin that uh, for them it is a very important decision for us maybe it is you know just uh, no, just uh, telling them about it but uh, and we are backed up with data but for the industry they require a, a, a better uh, i mean a backup in terms of uh, some uh, knowledge and technical arm within the government which provides them that sort of a support in understanding that whatever decisions they are taking you know is uh, are uh, important and they are necessary at the same time uh, uh, what happens is it's not just about a cost uh, when they are taking such decisions it's also about the services that they will get you know when they take such decisions and adopt these technologies and services doesn't just mean you know maintenance and operational maintenance it also means technical um, uh, know-how be, uh, you know uh, being available giving them the uh, people to give them the advice at the right time when they start adopting and being handheld at every stage when they adopt these such technologies so this entire ecosystem also needs to come up and i'm sure that when we start uh, you know, uh, accepting these new innovations and we bring it in our for we would uh, we also have to recognize that our offices and our officers and our team also needs to provide this support so that sort of a collaboration also can uh, be very well uh, done within the framework of the Ministry of Textiles with the technical offices being there and uh, in case there is any such support needed uh, for providing that, that service and that, that sort of uh, support and that security, that comfort, you know, that because they have been dealing with these offices for a very long time. And these technical offices, if they are also involved, so in our Bharat Techs, they all are going to be here. So it will be also an exposure for them as to what is happening uh, in this uh, field, what Terry is doing in what is efficiency. I think it will be a great exposure. I'll work with you on that. So uh, on this note, and on a very hopeful and a promising note, uh, I would like to thank uh, Terry for inviting me for this thematic track and would like to be kept updated also about how uh, we are faring in this. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable insight and inspiring words. May I welcome now the Mr. Deen Bandhu Gauda, Scientist F and Director at Central Pollution Control Board to get more insights on the regulator's perspective. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Actually, I will uh, inform about this uh, zero liquid discharge and this uh, reuse and what is the status actually. Uh, the zero liquid discharge is actually related with the safe treated water reuse concept because unless you reuse the water, it cannot be a zero liquid discharge. So what happened actually, people to, people's uh, and industry, they are avoiding this zero liquid discharge, they are uh, sometimes use untreated water for irrigation and uh, Sometimes they use this untreated water in cooling tower. Because what will happen, suppose if you use this uh, uh, water which is more than uh, 26 uh, sodium hydrogen ratio, then uh, irrigation, this uh, soil will be also in petrol and it will not work also. And same way also, if you avoid the COD treatment and if you can use the untreated COD applied in this cooling tower, then it will be converted water pollution to air pollution and lot of views will be also emitted. So for that actually we use this word safe treated water use concept. Uh, at present actually the ZHD's applicability is very limited area because when MOF uh, they are giving the environment cleanse condition, they have given the condition of uh, uh, zero liquid discharge condition. And state boards also they give in consent to operate uh, when they, while they are issued to the industry, they have also issued zero liquid discharge condition. And uh, CPC, we actually, we have not uh, <coughs> given any direct direction to provide zero liquid discharge except in the Ganga Basin area where the distilleries are located. And uh, for zero liquid discharge, uh, CPC has issued some direction to the industry to install flow meter and camera because, uh, because they are not provided any uh, monitoring system for the effluent parameters. So that to cross verify, actually, we ask the industry to install this flow meter and this. Uh, a camera so that we can see that whether you are discharging properly or you reuse the treated water in this uh, industry. Uh, actually, the zero liquid discharge, this uh, issue was uh, uh, discussed in several forums and we have discussed this issue with the uh, industry association and with uh, 
several CI, FICI, Manufacturing Association. And uh, actually then we have decided the, what, is the, what should be the definition of zero liquid discharge. And, uh, and what is the, actually this uh, existing policy and guidelines is there. And what are the treatment technology and what is the cost actually whether with the operational cost as well as this uh, capital cost also. And then further also we have examined that whatever uh, salt is generated, how far you can reuse and what, how can we manage this uh, salt, that is also another challenge is there in JLD. And, uh, and we have also recommended to achieve this industry to graded uh, action plan, so that the industry cannot say that we cannot achieve this JLD in a year or in a year two, but they can achieve it in, in a uh, staggered manner. And this generally concept also we have developed for this uh, coastal zone and this landlock area because the coastal area this uh, water is available and this landlock where water is scarce it is there. So this generally condition also varies with this uh, areas also. Uh, actually this uh, water availability per capita in this year 1951 was 5177 uh, KL and it was now reduced to less than 1000 meter cube, that 1000 KL per day. That is very less actually, gradually it is also reducing. And this industrial requirement of the water is also gradually increasing. 30, 23 billion cubic meter in 2025, now it will be increased to 63 billion cubic meter in 2050. That is the, as per the report of Ministry of Water Resources. And what happened this, uh, the, due to the over exclusion of groundwater, because uh, most of the industry they are taking this uh, NOC from the central groundwater board and they are uh, extracting water and because there is no water available in the nearby. So that is the another issue is they required actually to avoid this generally. And gradually what happened this uh, 351 pollution stretches find in 323 rivers. That means in every river you find a pollution stretches. So that's why we need some JLD. And second is there, uh, last is there, the Water Act, which was earlier there in 1977, and it was subsumed up in the GST Act. So there is no motivational is the conserve the water, because earlier industry was getting some uh, rebate and concession for uh, saving the water. But there is no such, uh, that act was after subsumed the act, this, uh, there is no motivation is there, so industry are also not, uh, they are giving any importance to this conserve the water. Uh, the definition which of uh, CPC has accepted is that uh, the for general is that entire quantity of effluent should be uh, treated to recover, recover water and recover water should be reused in the process or in utility. Only solids are discharged and that is suppose if reuse in a possible manner then it should be in environmental sound manner. That means whatever salt is there, suppose if you can reuse then it can be acceptable. Suppose and it should be disposed in an environmental sound manner. Second thing that reuse in treated water plant in horticulture, agriculture is not accepted uh, and we are not accepting this generally. That is the uh, very clear cut definition we have defined for generally. There are several technologies there to achieve the generally. Uh, somebody use physical chemical and biological, somebody use RO, FO. Uh, forward process means nano filter, ultra filter, that is a membrane process also they are using. Sometimes they are using the thermal process also, like evaporator, multi effect evaporator, uh, agitated thin film dryer, crystallized, like several thermal processes there to achieve also generally. And also, there are people are achieving nine, more than 90%, uh, 5% water recovery from the system also. And rigid management like evaporation, salt reuse, and disposal, these are the some rigid. And industry, they have also developed some customized scheme to achieve reduce, recycle, recovery and reuse concept. Uh, actually, when we developed the guidelines at that time, we have uh, taken the data from the different industry. Uh, Sector-wise data, we have taken that is capital cost without JDLD capacity and capital cost with JDLD and uh, how they are achieving. So the cost is varies from industry to industry, sector to sector. Because those industries who have their own captive power plant, their energy consumption is very less. For example, uh, uh, this one kilo, uh, for achieving the one KLD in ME, the cost is uh, 500 rupees, whereas the RO cost is uh, 25 to 50 rupees. But thing is that those who industry who has taken power from the grid, 
their cost is more because if, if you take 50 kilowatt and if you multiply with 10 rupees, their cost will be 500 rupees per KLD. But thing is, if they have own power plant, then the cost will reduce to 200 to 300 rupees. So that is all depend upon this, how you have taken the power. But Madam was telling that if you use the solar power, then the cost will be reduced further. So that it is also, uh, the energy cost will also reduce. So industry has to choose as the whether which uh, sector and which uh, uh, technology they have to address so that the energy cost, ultimately the energy cost is more important for the industry. Because unless the technology feasible is not there, the industry will not adopt any technology. That is the main theme of this. Uh, uh, this operational cost also we have calculated from the different industry, petroleum, refinery, fertilizer, sugar, all the industry I have calculated and with generally and suppose without generally. But you find that if generally the cost is very high, but uh, this Uh, the economics is more important here in this case is that uh, recover water, whatever water you recover, that, that will compensate the treatment cost because some of the state the water is available very low cost, some of the state the cost of water is very high. So we have to recompensate this treatment cost also. And recovery is also may more important. Suppose if you recover more than 90 percent, the treatment cost will be and you will recover the salt also. Similarly, for process modernization, cleaner technology, if you adopt some cleaner technology, this economy will also improve. And the non-compliance cost, the non-compliance cost is that sometimes industry, they feel that actually they are polluting the environment, but we are not assessing any damage. Suppose if you assess the damage cost, how much they have damaged the groundwater, how much damage this water, how much damage to the air, then the cost will be very high. If you take consider in the non-compliance cost, I think they will have to uh, consider the generally. Otherwise, what will happen? They are thinking this water is free, the air is free, everything is free. So that the cost they are not considering for this while calculating the general loads. What is the existing policy? Uh, as per the National Environment Policy 2006 of Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India, it is mentioned that they should practice the good practice for the water conservation. But uh, in that uh, policy, they have mentioned that they should not promote any technology. Actually, that is also because we are technology neutral and so we should not promote any technology. But thing is that whatever the best technology is available, the industry they should adopt. Whatever the clean technology available, they should adopt. Similarly, as per the national water policy, water is treated as economic good. That is also considered in MOWR 2012. And reuse, recycle through plant tariff system. That is also encouraged because unless you give this some water has some economic value, the people are thinking water is free, so they are uh, unnecessary and they are misuse the water also. That's why to regulate and we have to give some plant tariff system. And those industry who are conserving water, they should get some benefit also. Otherwise, they will not encourage and there will be no motivation. And CPC also provide a guidelines, which I was telling that it was in 2015 as well, the guideline was developed. At that time, CPC also installed, there are a lot of online co continuous monitoring system throughout this India and planned India basis. Uh, whatever the recommendation actually we have proposed in that guidelines, CTP and industry mandated for generally must continue because those industry which are uh, already achieving generally, because generally is not a uh, compulsory condition, this is a voluntary initiative. As on date, ministry is also accepting this is not a compulsory, this should be a voluntary. That's why what happened this industry and city, those who are generally, they are also gradually discouraging that why you will achieve this generally with uh, so high energy cost. So that is the, our recommendation that those who are continuing, they should also continue the generally condition. And this, uh, those who are existing, they should come up with some graded uh, upgradation of their uh, facilities so that they can achieve 50 percent or then 100 percent. Like gradual, they can achieve 100 percent generally after some time. Uh, in actually, we have targeted at that time that 2030, they will all will 100 percent generally. And state to consider guidelines in water policy and water pricing mechanism because unless the state has put some economic value on water, the industry should not, uh, they should not consider as a, they should consider as it is a free item, so we should, we should not invest anything on the general or achieving something. Uh, we have also asked the, uh, provided some guidelines for the coastal area. 
that uh, 50 percent C discharge they should uh, allowed and uh, they should after meeting the norms. Those new city people come, they also uh, achieve 50 percent wastewater in the reuse. Like this, we have uh, we have uh, we have given some recommendation that in 50, 75 percent they will achieve in five uh, next five years to achieve generally. In landlock area also we have to provide the same type of guidelines. Existing CTP and industrial units to upgrade uh, in five years and they will reuse 50 percent of their wastewater. And new CTP come up with the facility they should use 50 percent wastewater. And new industrial unit they should come up with 50 percent uh, waste, uh, wastewater for reuse and upgraded 75 in next five years. Actually, our motto is that uh, industry, they should come up with their voluntary plan so that it will be achieved in 2030 up to 100% they can achieve generally. Uh, these are the some of the points actually which I have already, I think, uh, already whether we should go for generally or not because due to high energy cost and sometimes this, uh, now there are some industry that are telling that uh, due to some high carbon print we should not encourage generally and uh, the, the wastewater reuse target should not be there, it should be volunteer and we should not uh, given that 100 percent generally in a year or two. That is, there are several point of uh, debatable question is there, but think that we should take it in a positive manner so that we can achieve and uh, there should be some uh, price mechanism should be there and some encouragement and state should give some consent or some uh, given some uh, benefit to the industry so that industry they will see that if you are using generally then we should get some benefit and finally also there is some monitoring mechanism there because uh, digital industry they actually they only use only camera and flow meter sometimes they are bypassing the system so we should avoid it so we should make a monitoring mechanism so we can see that this industry they are following the generally in uh, letter and spirit also and they are achieving in all the times thank you Thank you, sir. Since we are running out of time and there is another event scheduled to, to be held at this venue itself, I'll quickly um, request Ms. Chandrima Chatterjee, Secretary General, Confederation of Indian Textile Industry, for her industry's perspective. Ah, no problem. Yes, sir. No, 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 we are not presenting. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I think uh, anyway, a lot has been said in terms of the technology and feasibility. As an industry representative, in fact, uh, when Dr. Nupur asked me two, three days back, I was trying to check with some of my industry members. So, of course, uh, as, uh, as uh, it is evident that it will have a lower carbon footprint uh, and it can be retrofitted, it doesn't need too much of a size, it means the, the area needed is, so many of these requirements are extremely uh, adoptable and uh, feasible. So, the, most of them were very happy if it is there and they would like to know more about it. But in terms of the costing, I understand that's yet to be arrived at, but some benchmarks they gave was that they presently work on something like rupees 100 per meter cube or something, 100 to 150. So they would like to know what would be the costings on that. And also, of course, most of them are doing it or also for certain external compliances. Uh, ZLD is also one of them uh, for many of the, the brand-oriented uh, suppliers. So there, if these are aligned to that and these will help them in their reporting and the data generation that is required, of course, industry would like to have a business case of whatever they adopt. So that is, uh, that is the on only thing I thought that we, uh, we should look in when we are looking at uh, to promote this to our members. Uh, but in, but other, otherwise, it's pretty well-timed. If you see the kind of labeling requirements and all, blue water conservation is, is completely on your face. It's a very important criteria that everybody is wanting to demonstrate in terms of their, uh, their, their initiatives in this direction. And uh, for an industry which presently is a $160 billion industry uh, aiming to be $300 billion by 2030, there is a lot of material and waste generation optimization requirement that is there. Uh, so obviously we're looking at all possible solutions for both material and water optimization and energy optimization. In water, as ma'am said, that um, it's very critical. We have something like 20 to 25 major textile 
clusters across India, many of them are landlocked and have very acute issues of wastewater uh, treatment. So for all that reasons, uh, this is extremely relevant. I, I understand that ne this needs more uh, trial and uh, I, I would really love to sit down and understand which are the uh, clusters where it may be feasible and we would love to approach them. In fact, a very good opportunity is there because uh, though it can be retrofitted, but uh, a lot of new uh, infrastructure is coming up. The, PL Mitra, the PM Mitra scheme is coming up in seven states where I, I'm sure we are looking at all technologies that will support sustainability of the whole production process. The PM Mitra scheme in seven yeah. states. So wherever something new is coming, we'll surely like to promote whatever is sustainable. Uh, but of course, the, the majority is in the existing setup and there, uh, if there is a feasibility of retrofitting this, we would surely like to explore that. I think that's all from industry for now. We would, we'll be in touch and like to know how this progresses. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. May I now invite Mr. Vijay Kumar, Managing Director at Swan Environmental Private Limited for, her, for his environmental perspective. Some slides I can no, use. No, I have to skip few. Sir, I've got the message also. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let me just uh, introduce our company, Swan Environmental. We are from, uh, company name is Soil, Water, Air, Noise. We used to deal all these uh, elements and uh, de dealing uh, world class technology and helping industry and uh, uh, government agencies and with uh, new technologies uh, to measure all the pollutants and uh, of course today we have a good presentation I am not able to cover that uh, more of uh, my topic was organic uh, pollution monitoring using uh, TOC as a indispensable tool that was my concept we have expo here we have displayed this product also and we are already supplying this for last 30 years and even textile industry in the 25 years back itself, we have supplied this technology to monitor organic pollution uh, in the effluents, uh, treated or uh, influence and treated effluents. And uh, the biggest uh, re interesting concept today, what I'm listening for the TEDx technology and uh, to implement this, the most important point here is monitoring it uh, on real time and uh, optimizing it so that you can save much better cost. Uh, that is what we can contribute. And uh, we are very confident of that since if we monitor continuously and if you can they empower the operator to make critical decisions on time, it will save a lot of cost. That was actually message I want to give uh, to showing something. I know the time is not there. Thank you very much for opportunity given to me. I will share this uh, presentation to our interested later. Absolutely, sir. We can share the presentation to everyone who uh, wants it via uh, uh, mail. And as a vote of thanks now, I would request Dr. Nupur Bahadur to present our esteemed speakers with a small memento. Uh, actually, uh, one thing, ma'am, uh, actually I've got so many messages I've just seen. The question which you raised because this event is live stream, so people have asked for your question and they have said why so. Same question has come only one sentence I'll say that in a CETP we cannot have bypass as I said biological but since we are doing the same technology for a municipal sewage, uh, our sewage in our campus, we are getting BOD less than 5, COD less than 30. There we are completely bypassing biological and direct ad hoc and the plant is running since August 2020 in Terry Gurgaon campus. And it is treating mixed effluent from lab, toilets, hostel, canteens. So same question yours has come, therefore I have made a clarification. And uh, now coming. So uh, you can uh, speak. <laughs> Mr. Rajiv Ranjan Mishra, former director, NMCG.
Ms. Prajakta L. Verma, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Textile, Government of India. Mr. Deen Bandhu Gowda, Mr. Deen Bandhu Gowda, Scientist F and Director, CPCB, Government of India. Ms. Chandrima Chatterjee, Ms. Chandima Chatterjee, Secretary General, City. And Mr. Vijay Kumar, Managing Director, Swan Environment and Private Limited. Thank you all. Really, uh, we are really sorry because uh, we are very much <laughs> delayed on this venue is already booked for the next event. Thank you so much all for making this event a great success. I'm very grateful to the speakers. Ma'am, please. I'm very grateful to the speakers for making time and enlightening us on this immense, uh, with their immense knowledge and expertise. Also, thank you to all the delegates and participants for their active participation and insightful questions and meaningful contribution to this discussion. Thank you all. Have a great day.